For this example, let's turn this small space into a kitchen. Many items, such as appliances like refrigerators or dishwashers, can be placed simply by choosing the component and placing it in the model. Let's open the component tool in the Home tab and place a dishwasher using the first floor plan view. Now let's find an appropriate refrigerator and place that in the model. Finally, let's choose a sink and place the sink into the model. Now we will switch to a 3D view and it is easy to see that we have a good start to our kitchen. However, at this point in the process, it may be necessary to make custom fitting components such as countertops in order to complete the model. To make custom components, open the Model in Place tool. Now let's search for a family category that fits the component we are going to make. We can select Show Categories from All Disciplines for more options. Since we are making a counter, let's choose Furniture Systems. Now we will name the new component. Let's call it Kitchen Counter. Now in this mode, notice that we are unable to select any other components that are in the model. We are now ready to create forms for our model in place component. Once we are in the in place editor, we can select a type of form that we want to create. We can choose extrusion, blend, revolve, sweep, sweep blends, or void form. To make the countertop, let's make an extrusion. To create an extrusion, start by sketching the footprint of the extrusion. Remember, extrusions don't have to come up from the ground. Instead, we can choose a new work plane and make the form cut out from the wall. Using the same form, we can make two unconnected extrusions that follow the same properties, like this one around the sink. When the sketch is complete, we can set the properties of the extrusion. We will set the top to be 3 feet and the bottom to be 2 feet 10 inches high. This will give us a 2 inch thick countertop. We can also choose the material. In the materials dialog, let's choose a tile countertop. When we are finished, we can select the green check mark to complete the form. And in a 3D view, we can more clearly see the form that we have just made. If we are happy with the model in place component, we can select Finish Model in order to exit the in place editor. We are now able to select other components again. We can also select the component we just created and make minor changes like adjusting the extents. To make major edits to a model in place component, select it and choose Edit in Place, which will take us back to the Edit in Place mode. Once we are in this mode, we can select the extrusion form and edit that. You can now see that it is important to realize that a single component is made of many different forms, and each form is edited separately. For this extrusion, let's change one of the boundary lines to create a curved countertop.
When finished, select the check mark to complete the form. And we can switch to a 3D view to see this change. Since we are still in the in-place editor, we can also add new forms to the component. Let's start by adding a base to the sinks countertop. Sketch the footprint. and set the properties. This time we'll want the base to go from the ground to the bottom of the countertop. Let's also change the material and pick a wood finish for the base. When we are finished we can select the green check mark to complete the form and in the 3D view we can see our new extrusion. Once again, we are still in the in-place editor, so let's go ahead and add a sweep to the edge of the countertop. First, we will pick a path for the sweep. Let's select the edges of the counter. Then, we will select the green check mark when we are finished sketching the path. Now to make it easier to draw the sketch, let's change the view to look straight on to the crosshair. Next, select Edit Profile, or we can also load in a profile. This opens all of our drawing tools, and using the drawing tools, we can sketch a profile that will be swept along the chosen path. After making a closed loop sketch, we can change the sweep properties, such as giving it a material, and when finished, select the green check mark. Since we have now selected a path and drawn the sweep profile, we can select the next green check mark to complete the sweep. Now let's change our perspective to more clearly see the sweep we have just created. If we are satisfied with the component, we can select the green check mark to exit the in-place editor. To demonstrate void forms, let's edit this model in place component and turn it into a wine rack. Select the component and open the in-place editor. Now, choose to make a void extrusion. This form will cut through our solid form. Next, we can set a work plane, which will be the beginning of the void form. Select pick a plane and choose the face of the solid extrusion. Now we can draw a sketch of the void that we want to create. The void can be made of multiple closed loop sketches. When we are finished with the sketch, we can select properties for this void. Since the solid form is only one foot deep, let's change the void end to be one foot. When finished, select the green arrow to finish the model. Now we can see the finished component, which is a combination of both a solid form and a void form. When satisfied, select the green arrow to exit the in-place editor.
Before creating a revolve, we will first make a plane that we will use later in the demonstration. To do this, we will switch to a floor plan and draw a reference plane. The line we are drawing is the edge of the plane which goes into the screen. Let's select this plane and name it Example. Now let's create a model in place component for simple demonstration purposes. We will also give this component the name example. Next, open the revolve tool and set the work plane to be the one that we have just created. Now show the plane and then switch to an elevation view so we are looking straight at the plane. Now, using the drawing tools, sketch the shape that we want to be revolved. When finished, let's sketch the axis line or the line that our profile will be revolved around. Once the profile and axis line have been sketched, we can select the green check mark to create the revolve. We can also select the revolve form and change its properties, for example, its end angle. We can also give it a new material. Now let's experiment with creating blends. To begin, we must create a bottom shape for the form. If we are unable to create the sketch, we may have to change the work plane. Once the base shape is finished, select Edit Top to sketch the top shape. When finished, select the green check mark to create the form. In a 3D view, we can see that we have created a 3D form by blending together two separate shapes over a specific height. To edit the properties of the form, select it, and we can change its height. We can also give it a new material if we wanted. Now let's create a swept blend. To begin, Sketch or pick a path for the sweep. For this example, we will sketch one. The path we create can have as many curves as we desire. However, it can only be made from one continuous line with no sudden changes in direction. Select the check mark to finish the sketch of the path. Now, select a crosshair and sketch an initial shape for the blend. When finished, select the other crosshair and sketch the final shape of the blend.
When both the start and end shapes along with the path have been sketched, select the check mark to create the form. This tool blends the initial and final shape together over the selected path. We can also give this form a new material, and remember that each form that we have created can be a void form as well as a solid form.